Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Friday mountain weather update, and we are at the front end of what's going to be a very heavy snow period across the West with atmospheric river moisture, a couple of different storm systems, a lot of orographic lift. This is just the start right here. This is Mount Shasta. I'm forecasting like 60 inches of snow mid mountain um, between now and the, the 3rd of February, and there may be even more accumulation beyond that. So that's just one example. That's, again, up at Mount Shasta. Um, another place that's going to benefit from this flow is Revelstoke, a lot of interior BC. You've got heavy snow already there today. It's going to snow all day today and probably into tomorrow with heavy accumulations and then some additional snow beyond this as well. And I think we could see 15, 16 inches of snow uh, up at Revelstoke and Red Mountain and... Uh, a kicking horse, Fernie probably at about a foot, but you get the idea. I mean, this rich Pineapple Express flow is going to benefit a lot of people. Um, let me take you to a couple of other places. So this is Taos. They got 12 inches of new snow from that last storm. That's exactly what I was expecting. And now it's a beautiful day. Taos is out of the flow for quite a while. Um, sunny skies there today. Um, all the weather is really going to be north of Colorado, north and west of Colorado for quite some time. Although some of that moisture appears like, and, and I sort of mentioned this yesterday, it does look like it's going to drop down and, and spill over into the northern mountains of Colorado, places like Steamboat, which is what you're looking at here this morning. I mean, it's a gorgeous morning, but you've got some snow on the way coming with this flow. I think some of that will drop down to Mount Warner. Buffalo Pass, the Flat Tops, Mount Zirkel, over to Cameron Pass, and then maybe an inch closer to the I-70 corridor. Um, when you get when the floodgates open with these Pineapple Express events, it's hard to hold back the moisture and cage it completely. And so that's what we're going to see in a lot of northern Colorado is some overrun over the course of time. Okay, let me uh, take you back, and I want to show you radar here this morning. Um, so here it is across the west, the Pacific Northwest, the west, and it is just full of action. So this is the start of our atmospheric river setup and at least the first storm system. And you can see we're just getting nailed with high cascade, high volcano, high Sierra snow, and we're getting overrun and, and it's now moving into a lot of Idaho. Um, Schweitzer's in for snow, Brundage, Sun Valley, you've got a couple of feet coming. You can see the blue up there in the parts of interior BC. We're just getting started with this flow. And then eventually, this whole conveyor belt of moisture is going to affect the Wasatch. And my numbers for the Wasatch continue to go up. They're very impressive now. Um, the Tetons are going to be one of the bullseyes with this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to look at all that in this, this forecast. Let me take, take into NorCal. Um, so high snow levels, you're going to have to be pretty high, um, you know, above eight, 9,000 to really get the best accumulation out of this. But Shasta's in on this. Mount Lassen will eventually uh, get hit with this. And then eventually um, Tahoe, um, and it's going to take some time before it reaches Mammoth. But um, eventually Tahoe's going to get quite a bit of snow out of this, especially above eight, 9,000 feet. Um, okay, up in the northeast, we've got a weather system moving through. Most of this is rain in the Ohio Valley. It's very warm with this, and it's creating some ice. You can see the pink shade, some ice through New York State. And then there's going to be some snow where it's colder on the north side through parts of upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine at the ski areas. So that'll be happening today. Um, here is water vapor satellite imagery to, to really just give you the lay of the land here. Oranges and reds are going to be your drier air at low levels. And you can see all the dry air now across Colorado, the Four Corners, um, where our storm system was yesterday. It's now departed, and that's that storm that's heading up into the northeast now. Behind it, here is our Pineapple Express connection. You know what? I'm going to use green. I'm going to have a little fun with this today. So there's our, there's our connection. So that's the fuel. That's the extra fuel. Not only do you have storm moisture, but now you've got this atmospheric river contribution. Um, and that just juices everything up. And then there's a couple of storms that entrain this. There's the one that's been affecting Hawaii with severe weather and high volcano snow. And then here's our initial storm system right here. So you've got two players, and they're both going to deliver a lot of precipitation to the west. Here's our, this is what's called integrated vapor transport. This is how you spot many times the atmospheric river and you can see the surge here it's moderate in intensity and, and sort of spiking into that strong category for that san francisco bay corridor all the way up to the high sierra 
And that's happening now as we speak through tomorrow into the second, and then it begins to weaken after that. But this push is going to be intense. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the snow timeline here. So here's what I'm expecting. Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So Big Sky, you've got uh, light snow coming in late today through tomorrow, and then your heaviest period is the afternoon of 2-2 through 2-5. That's when I think you could pick up 8 to 12 inches of snow accumulation. Um, in the Wasatch, things are really looking good now. Um, there's just been a little bit of transition to the south with the jet, and that's really going to help the flow over the Wasatch. Um, so late 131 through 22 heavy. Um, and we'll zoom in, and I'll drill down on that in a second. But then another shot, 25 heavy. Tetons, you've got heavy snow coming in this afternoon tonight through 21 and 22. Light on 23, 24. That's going to be your uh, sort of waiting period for the final piece of this to come through on 25. Colorado, 2122 is light. But the exception to that is going to be the Northern Mountains, where I think we could see moderate to heavy accumulation. And I'll talk more about that coming up. And then your heaviest period overall for the remainder of Colorado is going to be 2.5 through 2.7 with the final piece. And that's often the way these play out in Colorado. Um, you often have to wait until the final storm system with these atmospheric river setups. And interior BC, you've got heavy snow today and tomorrow. I showed you the cam up there. Um, so over a foot of accumulation in many places. And then light 2223. Tahoe, you're going to be in it this afternoon. So that plume moves in and it's going to be heavy above eight or 9,000 feet <clears throat> all the way through 22. And heavy on 24, heavy on 26. So like I said, this is going to be an extended period with at least two different shots of heavy snow for the west. In the northeast, light to moderate uh, this afternoon, tonight, and then a couple of light shots there, 2223, and moderate on 26. Okay, let's drill down. So this is Alta, Utah, at about 9,000 feet of elevation. So this particular model keeps it completely dry today. That's today, the 31st. Winds increase this afternoon up there at Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, up to about uh, 25, 30 miles an hour this afternoon. Look at the green. That's the humidity. That, that goes sky high, up to 100% overnight. Then we start the accumulation, and it continues on the 1st, snows on the 2nd, and then it trails off late on the 2nd with additional snow down the road. So this is the first storm system. This particular model accumulates almost 50 inches of snow accumulation. So that that is a huge uptrend for the Wasatch. Um, the winds during the height of this are going to be gusting 30, 35, 40, almost 50 miles an hour there on the tail end. Um, so this means business. And again, this is up there at Alta Snowbird, effective about 9,000 feet. My numbers are not quite to 50. Maybe when you combine the first and the second, but I'll show you what I'm thinking as far as the first um, here in just a second. Okay, so that's Alta. Let me take you now up into Wyoming. We'll do, we'll have, I don't normally um, drill down into Wyoming, but I want to with this. So this is, this is up in uh, close to Jenny Lake. So if you're familiar with this area, you're kind of looking at a forecast here at about, and this is at about 9,000 feet. So this is at a decent altitude, very representative. So you're kind of looking at that territory between um, uh, Jackson Hole Ski Area and um, just north of, of the Grand Teton. So that area kind of leading up to the mid the mid mountain point in this forecast is very impressive. Snow arrives this afternoon, picks up and it is heavy overnight. The winds increase to probably 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts and they stay steady through the course of this event with heavy snow production through the second and then you can see the winds kind of died down. But this forecasts over 40 inches of accumulation between late tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's very impressive. And that's not, but there's another batch of snow behind this. So for both locations, you can see the trend is up. The amount definitely. The okay, let me talk about Colorado. So I was talking about the possibility of spillover into the northern mountains, and you can see the uh, the green wall coming. This is a time high forecast for steamboat in the northern the northern mountains. The green is a higher humidity, and then there's obviously lift if you can get the right wind direction, and I can see it right there. So it's dry uh, basically all of today. 
Then the green increases as a 72-hour forecast, roughly. And you read this from right to left, so it's it's coming. Um, and, and you're just socked in. There's a lot of spillover. I mean, and if I were just looking at this at face value, I'd say, you know, this could be a foot of snow up there in the northern mountains. I'm not quite forecasting that much in my, but it's close. It's probably eight inches in my forecast. Okay, let's talk about the jet stream pattern. And it is, uh, it's very impressive. Okay, so we're going to start it at uh, early this morning. And so what I'm looking for in this are the brighter colors. I'm looking for the reds, the oranges, the tans, because we're looking at winds at about 30,000 feet up in the air at, at jet stream level. And so the, it's the stronger winds that are guiding the storms around and a lot of the action. Um, so look to the west. You can see our jet stream coming in, plowing into the west. That's what's going to deliver. It's like a conveyor belt of moisture. So it picks up and it sort of escorts this atmospheric river moisture and storm systems, and it just slams it into the west. Um, okay, here we go. This is late on Saturday, February uh, 1st. Here's early Sunday, February 2nd, and that conveyor belt just continues with all that moisture. All that wind is having a dynamic effect. Late on Sunday, here's early on Monday, and then the jet starts to shift a little bit further to the south. And that's going to benefit the rest of the Sierra, um, more of Utah, and eventually Colorado. Here we are on late February 4th, Tuesday. Here's early Wednesday. Here's early Thursday, February 6th, and the flow continues. So we're not out of it. The West has is, is got an extended period with two or three different waves of action with this. All right, snow accumulation over time. So again, on this, I'm going to start it early uh, today, early this morning. The light blues are going to be over here on the legend, under three inches of accumulation. Um, the greens, once they pop three to six, anything in the yellow is over six. Um, you can see where the snow is falling right now. It's in the Pacific Northwest. It's in Northern California. It's in interior BC. All right, here we are by late today. Snow overspreads the remainder of Idaho, moves into the Tetons, moves into the Wasatch, and look at the Sierra starting to get accumulation. Look at the reds up there in the Pacific Northwest. That's, that's generally over 10 to 12 inches in that time period. Here's early Saturday. Look at that flare over the top of the Wasatch in the northern mountains of Utah. Um, and look at the snow over the top of the Tetons. It's still there. This is, all right, here we are late on Saturday. There's a little bit of spillover into the northern mountains of Colorado at times, and you can see it right there. That's probably a better shot. That spillover there. Um, here we are by midday on Sunday the 2nd. New storm rolling into the northeast. Out west late on February 2nd. Boy, that bullseye right over the top of the Tetons continues. Here we are early on uh, Monday, February 3rd. Um, here's early Tuesday, February 4th. Look at the Sierra getting smacked right here with this second storm system. Um, another shot for the Tetons, another shot for the Wasatch, and then it starts to move into Colorado. So the storm system comes out of California, makes its move into Utah and Colorado. The jet stream sinks to the south. This is probably the best shot for the remainder of Colorado, and that's four into five, and then um, it's gone. But look at the snow up there in the, in the northeast, another storm system. Okay, here are my numbers. All right, so let's talk about the rest of today through the third. We're going to start in the Wasatch, so the story there continues to go up. I've got two to three feet of accumulation through the third, and there's additional snow beyond the third, so just keep that in mind. So big-time powder days ahead. Um, haven't changed anything with the Tetons, uh, basically 24 to 30 inches through the third, and again, additional snow beyond that time frame. In Colorado, the spillover to Steamboat in the northern mountains, about 8 inches, maybe an inch along I-70 and up over the Continental Divide. Up into parts of Montana, it's generally 10 to 12 inches, depending on where you're at. Interior BC, uh, 16s, uh, 12 over Fernie, um, unless as you drop down into Banff Sunshine. Pacific Northwest, 1, 2, 3 feet. Not much change there. You're going to have to be pretty high, though. High cascades, high volcanoes. In California, 60 inches at Shasta, and that might be at a minimum. It could be more. It's probably more. Um, and then down to uh, Tahoe, you're going to get snow starting this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow. And looking for a couple of feet. If you're above 9,000, it's going to be more. It's going to be more than two feet. And then eventually we start to see some snow develop over the top of Mammoth. But you'll have snow beyond this time period as well, beyond the third. 
So keep in mind, this is just through the third. Okay, in the northeast, a couple, three different storm systems, all pretty small, but uh, two to six inches will probably do it. Uh, for 99% of the territory here through Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts. A little bit more there through Snow Ridge because you're going to have um, some lake effect uh, preference there as well. But we'll end on the big western map here, guys. And I mean, this is really exciting stuff. This is a huge push of moisture um, and probably two, maybe three different storm systems to bring this in and bring it home. Uh, and we're really going to bring home the bacon and the Wasatch, the Tetons, um, Idaho, Interior BC, the Pacific Northwest, and the Northern um, Sierra. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. I'll keep things updated. Take care and have a great day.